Today we're going to be talking about how to use spherical coordinates to find volume. We've been given the triple integral of quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared squared over the region b, where b is the ball with center at the origin, the point 0, 0, 0, and a radius of 5. Now notice that our triple integral is given to us in Cartesian coordinates. We need to convert it to spherical coordinates and then find volume. As a reminder, I've written the conversion formulas that we use to get from Cartesian coordinates in x, y, and z to spherical coordinates in rho, theta, and phi. We have these four conversion formulas, and we also have a conversion formula for dv, which doesn't just convert directly to d rho, d theta, d phi. We actually have to add this rho squared sine of phi component to it in order to convert from Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates. So the first thing we'll do is convert our integrand, quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared squared, and we'll convert our dv from Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates, and then we'll deal with our limits of integration. So we're gonna have here the triple integral, like this, of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Well, we know that this value, given our conversion formula, rho squared equals that same value, that that value is gonna to convert to rho squared. So what we're gonna do here is say rho squared, but then of course that's quantity squared, so we have to add that additional exponent there. And then we know that our dv value, whenever we convert from Cartesian to spherical coordinates, is gonna convert this way, where we add the extra rho squared sine of phi, and then attach to that d rho d theta d phi like this. So now you notice that we've converted our entire integrand and this dv value here from Cartesian to spherical coordinates. The only thing we don't have are limits of integration but we do have here d rho d theta d phi, so we know first that we're gonna be integrating with respect to rho. So we need our limits of integration with respect to rho so that we can attach them to this innermost integral here. Well, in spherical coordinates, rho represents the distance from the origin to our coordinate point. It's essentially the length of the line segment from the origin to whatever point here this represents. And we know that we're trying to find the volume where b here is the ball with center origin and radius five. So we know that the line segment from the origin to the outermost edge of our ball is never going to be greater than 5. We're going to start here at 0 and we're going to go out to 5. Our longest line segment will be 5 because the radius of the ball everywhere will be 5. So our limits of integration for rho are going to be 0 to 5. Now our limits of integration for theta, theta in spherical coordinates represents the same thing as theta in cylindrical coordinates, which is the angle between the positive direction of the x-axis and our coordinate point here. So our limits of integration for theta are always gonna be zero to two pi, because the angle between our point and the positive direction of the x-axis could be as little as zero, but as great as two pi. And then finally, when it comes to our limits of integration with respect to phi here, phi in spherical coordinates represents the angle between the positive direction of the z-axis and the line segment that's formed between the origin and our coordinate point. Because that's 180 degree range, our limits of integration for phi are always gonna be zero to pi. So really your limits of integration for phi and theta are always gonna stay the same. It's your limits of integration for rho that you have to worry about. So now that we've got our limits of integration, we just need to simplify our integrand as much as possible and then evaluate. So here we're gonna have the triple integral. We'll leave our limits of integration as they are, zero to pi, zero to two pi, and zero to five here. And you can see we're going to get rho squared squared, or just rho to the fourth, multiplied by rho squared is going to give us rho to the sixth, multiplied by sine of phi, and then we have d rho d theta d phi. Now integrating this first with respect to rho, we're gonna treat phi as a constant, therefore sine of phi becomes a constant coefficient on this rho to the sixth term here. Using power rule to integrate this rho to the sixth term, we'll get here the integral from zero to pi, the integral from zero to two pi, like this, and we're gonna have one seventh rho 
to the 7 times sine of phi, and we'll be evaluating this on the interval rho equals 0 to rho equals 5. I always like to write rho equals 0 and rho equals 5 so that I remember that I'm plugging in 0 and 5 for rho and not for phi, which I have left over here. And then I just leave my d theta and d phi out here on the end. Now I need to evaluate on this interval, so I'll end up with the integral from 0 to pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, like this. Plugging in my upper limit of integration for rho, I get 5 to the 7th power, which we'll just go ahead and leave as 5 to the 7 right now, and I'm going to multiply that by 1 7th, so I get 5 to the 7 over 7 times sine of phi. Then I'm going to subtract whatever I get when I plug in 0 for rho. When I get 0 to the 7, that's just 0. That's going to cancel out that whole term. No need for me to write a minus 0 here. So my result is just 5 to the 7 divided by 7 times sine phi, and I leave my d theta d phi out here. Now we integrate with respect to theta, and when we do that, that means we're treating all of the other variables as constants, so we're going to treat phi here as a constant. We'll end up with the integral from 0 to pi. This is just going to become a constant coefficient in front of theta because there's no theta here involved. I just have 5 to the 7 over 7 sine of phi all multiplied here by theta, and I'm going to be evaluating that on the interval theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi, and I leave my d phi out here for later. Now when I evaluate on the interval theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi, I'll get the integral from 0 to pi here. I'll plug in 2 pi first for theta. If I move it out to the front, I'll get 2 pi times 5 to the 7 over 7 times sine of phi, and then I'm going to subtract whatever I get when I plug in 0 for theta. Well, of course, plugging in 0 here, which is multiplied by the rest of my integrand, it's going to give me 0 for the whole thing. There's no need for me to write minus 0. So this is my result, and I just have my d phi. Now, if I take the integral with respect to phi, I know that the integral of sine of phi is negative cosine of phi. So I just pull that negative sign out in front, and I'm left with negative 2 pi times 5 to the 7 divided by 7 cosine of phi, and I want to evaluate this on the interval phi equals 0 to phi equals pi. Plugging pi in for phi first, I'm going to get cosine of pi, which is negative 1. That's going to turn this all into a positive because I have a negative times a negative 1, so I'll get 2 pi times 5 to the 7 divided by 7. Then I want to subtract whatever I get when I plug in 0 for phi. Well, cosine of 0 is just 1, so 1 multiplied by this value here is just going to give me this value including the negative sign. But remember, I subtract whatever I get here. So this minus sign times this minus sign is going to give me a plus 2 pi times 5 to the 7 all over 7. When I simplify here, I'll get 4 pi times 5 to the 7 divided by 7. And if I take 5 to the 7 on my calculator and I multiply it by 4, I can see that my final answer is 312,500 pi all divided by 7. And that's how you find the volume of a region using cylindrical coordinates and a triple integral.